Why hello there folks and welcome back to another episode of Socket Sanctuary. What sort of 1080p gaming GPU can you get for $50? Can you play AAA games on a shoestring budget? How easy is it to find a GPU like this? As always with this sort of thing, I tend to pick a conservative estimate for the average price of the GPU so you could likely find this one for less, or if you search for a bit, you could probably find a better one for around the same price. Anyhow, a lot of people might think that now is a bad time to buy a GPU as cryptocurrency miners have driven up the cost of both new and used cards. However, if you know what cards to look for, there is still value to be found. AMD has been hit the hardest by the price increase brought on by cryptocurrencies, so the first step was to look at Team Green. And to my shock, both the 600 and 700 series cards were incredibly cheap. I managed to pick up this GTX 760 for 40 bucks. However, on average, they sell for around the 50 to $60 price point. So, what kind of performance can you get for the $50 price point on a GPU? Well, the GTX 760 is based off of the DirectX 12 capable Kepler architecture, with 1,152 CUDA cores at a 1.1 GHz core clock. This card is capable of playing the latest titles at 1080p. With only 2 GB of GDDR5, it's almost comparable to the GTX 1050. Is it actually as good as a Pascal card though? Well, it depends which one actually. So to find out exactly, we'll be putting this through its paces in a couple of AAA benchmarks to see what kind of performance it can achieve. I won't be testing any easy to run esports like CSGO, League, or Dota as this card can handle them with ease even at the higher resolutions. But the games that we will be testing will be Overwatch with a 100% render scale, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Witcher 3, Battlefield 1, and Doom. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that the frame rates that I got will likely be lower than any newer Ryzen or Skylake or newer CPU, as the test bench is based off of a 5 year old Xeon running only at around a 4 GHz clock. So, if you have a newer CPU, you could likely easily add a couple of frames to each benchmark to get a more accurate depiction of the performance that you'd achieve with this card. And. In Overwatch, we tested the game at 1080p high settings with a 100% render scale and got a more than competitive 86 frame per second average. Even during the most intense moments, it rarely dropped below 60, meaning your game would remain smooth throughout. If all you wanted to play was Overwatch at 1080p, you wouldn't need anything more than this. In Doom at 1080p high settings, the card was a bit more stressed. With a 55 FPS average, you would still get a good gaming experience. The game did, at times, drop below the 30 FPS range, however, only very briefly. For $50, it's still an impressive performance, as it clearly outperforms the GT 1030, but for $20 cheaper. In Grand Theft Auto V 1080p high settings, the performance of this card is more than adequate. With an over 88 FPS average at these settings and a 50 FPS minimum, gaming at these settings would be a smooth, easy on the eyes experience. In addition, with this setup there were no micro stutters and gaming was as smooth as silk. The Witcher 3 1080p high was a bit harder on this card. However, even in the busy cityscapes, the card managed a 35 FPS average. If you were to drop the settings to medium, you would see a large jump in performance as right now at these settings, 2GB of VRAM doesn't quite cut it for high settings in this game. But as I stated earlier, a better CPU might be able to make this game a bit faster at these settings. Battlefield 1 was much the same story at 1080p high settings. At these settings we got an average of 32 FPS. Although playable in single player, the more competitive multiplayer mode may not be as enjoyable. However, drop the settings down to medium and you'll be just fine. Even so, the performance is still pretty impressive for such an affordable little card. So, if you're looking for a GPU in the $50 price point and are willing to buy used, the GTX 760 isn't a bad little card. It may not be perfect and for $60 more you can get a GTX 1050 that performs only a little bit better, but for this particular price point, 
it's hard to beat. As always, with these videos, constructive criticism is welcome. If you'd like to see a particular CPU or GPU reviewed, or a certain game benchmarked, just let me know, I always read the comments. However, unfortunately, making these videos can get kind of expensive. I want to make sure that you get the video reviews that you want, as well as the best quality content in general. So, we are launching a Patreon campaign today, and 100% of everything that is generated will be used to help create better content and allow more frequent content on this channel, as I won't have to wait as long between purchases for hardware for the particular video requests. Any and all support is extremely appreciated, even if you can't support through Patreon. As a thank you for all of the past and present support of this channel, I'm launching a Discord server where the community can get together, game, or talk about old hardware. I will be on that server from time to time, so if you have any questions or comments, that's a great place to ask them, and the link for the Discord will be in the description below. Thanks again for all of your support, it's incredibly appreciated, and I can't thank you enough. As always, may your frame rates be high and your prices low, and I'll catch you folks next time.